yes, people have become pregnant without a uterus. They got pregnant after a hysterectomy. And you probably can call a baby a parasite. We'll talk about it. I don't know who designed the system, but it's not designed well. The ovaries are not actually attached to the uterus, so the eggs can float around in the body cavity. If they become fertilized, they can attach themselves to weird places like the intestines or liver or lung. In this unfortunate case, a woman had a baby attached to her diaphragm, and yes, it tore right through it. Lots of people are walking around with diaphragmic hernias already. That means there is a tear in the space that's supposed to keep your intestines down and your lungs up. I listened to a doctor describe a patient who had a baby attached to somebody's lung. The baby was viable, was born healthy, that woman lost her lung. Now, having an ectopic pregnancy, which just means any pregnancy at the uterus, is not all that common. It's also fairly uncommon to get pregnant after you've had your uterus removed. It has been happening more often, and that may just be because more people are getting hysterectomies and their ovaries are left over, or more younger women are getting it. This can happen pretty quickly after hysterectomy, sometimes within a month. And then for some women, it happened over 10 years later. For one unfortunate woman, it happened twice. Now this can result in loss of life. It can also result in a healthy baby, but more often loss of life. There may have been scenarios where it just wasn't caught and it didn't result in loss of life. That would have been a lithopod. That is what happens when a baby is not born and ends up not being reabsorbed because it's too large. So the body just kind of covers it in calcium and it becomes a little statue. The human body is terrifying. Now, can we consider a baby a parasite? And this got a lot of pushback and it's been hotly debated for nearly a hundred years. Babies do share these qualities. They take nutrients from the mother. The mother ends up losing it to provide for the fetus. You might say that can't be a parasite. It's a human. They're the same species. Well, parasitism comes in a lot of shapes and colors. A lot of us are familiar with the cuckoo birds. Those push other little chicks out of the nest and then Take the parents' time and energy. But anglerfish can be considered a form of parasitism too. Their entire mating process is parasitism. The male anglerfish will attach on to the female, just bite her, and then they will become one. They'll share a circulatory system. That anglerfish will spend the rest of its life attached to the female, and they will become an appendage of sorts. This is a lot worse than what seahorses do. It may be that humans just evolved a form of parasitism. Just like other mammals, they kept their babies inside of them so that they could keep them safe. There's always trade-offs there. One of which is that we're born pretty freaking small because there is an evolutionary arms race between the mother and the baby. The baby wants to be born healthy and alive and as large as possible because it wants to survive infancy. The mother wants to survive that process. They also need to evade the host's immune system because... Your body does not want a foreign thing inside of it. Sometimes. So are babies parasites? Kind of. The answer is that it doesn't really matter. This is a man-made term. It's the same answer I would give if somebody asked if a virus was alive. In the most technical of terms, no. Ultimately, a lot of these terms were made and defined, and then when we discovered new things, we had to modify them so that they didn't qualify for that other thing. You'll see that with the definition of life and sentience, and consciousness, because they certainly cannot be applied to a robot. In my humble opinion, this is our beautiful little parasitic miracle.